like to welcome everyone this morning. Thanks for coming and uh, wanting to praise God and uh, worship together. Um, I know the kids had a little uh, fall party last night, and uh, everything I hear from that was good. And had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, and uh, so we're glad for that. And got some plans to keep some of those things going through the fall, so uh, look for the next notices. Um, got a thank you card uh, to read here. It says, Dear Church family, I just want to thank everyone for prayers, cards, and phone calls during my recent illness. I especially want to thank the kids that made me cards that really lifted my spirits when the nurse delivered them to me. As always, when there is a need, uh, this congregation steps up. Thank you for all that you do in Christian love, uh, Rich and Donnie and Mason. So, uh, thank you for them. I'll put that on the bulletin. <coughs> Um, here's uh, the only upcoming event is daily devotionals are still being posted uh, on the Facebook. Um, birthdays and anniversaries: uh, the 25th is Quincy Bailey's birthday. The 26th is uh, Brandy Kimmer and Irene May's uh, birthdays, and the 28th is Ron Brewer uh, and Marilyn Gallagher's birthdays. And. Uh, is there anything else I need to mention before I go to the prayer list? Okay. Um, an update today, uh, Alice Stone's sister, uh, Margaret Morris, uh, she passed away this week. She was 96. Um, that's uh, Marshall Bailey's aunt. So, uh, be mindful with our family. Um, updates here, uh, Randy Taylor uh, continues to need our prayers. Um, health issues. Uh, Sandy Buttermore, she's recovering from knee surgery. Uh, Doug Moffitt, uh, with a friend of Chris Smith in the hospital, he passed away this weekend. Uh, so I want to be mindful of them. Uh, the family of Eric Cassell, uh, this is Debbie Hopmaster's aunt, uh, she passed away. Uh, Eric Cassell did. Uh, J.R. Celeste, a uh, friend of the farmers, is uh, added to the prayer list as well. Uh, we continue to have a Pretty long prayer list if you look at the back of the bulletin. We want to uh, be mindful of all these people. Uh, we know that uh, trials of life uh, can be taxing and uh, we need the Lord to get through it. So we need each other. Uh, let's all bow together in prayer as we begin this morning. Yes? Can I add to the prayer list? Um, 13 year old Aiden Woolman, he's an eighth grade student at Columbia, was hit by a semi while riding his bike last night, and he was killed. Aiden Warren, 8th grade from Columbia. Uh, he was killed last night riding his bike. So I want to be mindful of, of their family right now, and all of his friends right now. Let's all bow together in prayer, please. <clears throat> Lord, we come before you this morning. We want to praise you, Lord. And thank you uh, for being our God. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your creation. For all the ways that you have created us and the ways that you uh, sustain us, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for your son Christ that you sent to this earth in a way to redeem us to save us, to make us your own, that we can be in heaven with you. Lord, we thank you that we can be forgiven of our sins. We are not worthy many times of that. And we, we thank you for wanting to do that for us. We pray that we would live a, a good life before you, that we would seek to please you uh, to live righteously before you help us to be truthful and honest and upright, Lord. Lord, we lift up before you uh, those on our prayer list that we've mentioned today. Um, we pray that your hand would be upon them and give them healing. We pray that your hand would be upon the families that have lost loved ones and give them comfort. Uh, Lord, we, we uh, know that there's trials for our souls, and uh, we pray that your, your hand would be with us, that we would be 
strengthened and that we would uh, help each other, that we would be a blessing to each other through those things. Lord, we, we thank you that we can be here today. We thank you that we can uh, be in your word. We thank you that we can break bread and, and commune with one another and, and uh, be able to commune with you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We will glorify, number 578. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him he is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the quickly a story. Peyton says, Roger, could you hear me singing this sing, singing last week? You know, Peyton and Logan and Jonah and, and Max and different ones are on our Wednesday evening class. I was really singing out loud, you know, so Peyton, I'm looking at you and I'm hearing you a little bit, okay? <laughs> our next song is number 694. We'll sing this song through twice. Heart of a Servant. Give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love, then use me, O oh Lord, so that the world can see you. Give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love, then also in our class. <laughs> okay, or not, next song is number 763. 763. After this, we'll go to God in prayer. Oh, Master, let me walk with Thee in the
Holy Lord Father, we're so thankful to be gathered here this morning. We pray, Lord, that the songs that we sing, the words that we speak, the thoughts that we think, will all glorify you. Thank you for being the one true and living God. Thank you for blessing us in ways beyond measure. Thank you for answering our prayers. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be with each of those on the prayer list, especially our brother Randy and, and those others who are suffering from serious illness, Father. Please watch over them and strengthen them. Give them comfort, Lord, knowing that you are the one true and living God. Father, we know in life things that happen to us that are beyond our control. But in all things, Father, you are the Lord. Please, Lord, bless the, those who work as missionaries throughout the world and throughout this country, Father. We pray that you'll bless their efforts. We know that your word did not return to you empty. Father, we're thankful for all those who work in your vineyards. Please, Father, be with our young people. As they grow and mature, Father, please be with them. We ask for their so you be with them and keep them healthy and, and safe and Father, but especially Father, that they will learn, learn of your righteousness and they will have the desire to obey the gospel. Father, we pray for those who are not here today, are not able to be here, and also for those who have chosen not to be here. Father, we pray for them that something will, will compel them in their life to remember you, to return to you. Father, we know that you know, we know that you love all men, and that you would desire for all to be saved. Father, please guide us as we live our lives each day to work as your servants, to spread the good news of Jesus, that all have the opportunity to obey the gospel. Father, we ask you to be with Gary this morning. Bring to his remembrance the, the words, the, the, the lesson that he has studied, Father, help him to, to convey that message to each one of us and help us to understand it. Father, we thank you for Jesus for the perfect life he lived. It's in his name we pray. After this song, we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the
fill the mouth so we can remember Jesus on the cross. Let's pray for the bread. Dear Father, we come to you. Thank you so much for your son and his sacrifice on that cross. We know that his body was beaten and bruised and hung on that cross, knowing that he could have left it any time he wanted to, but he knew that he stayed there, loved us, and know that we needed this sacrifice. We ask you, Father, to please be with us as we take this bread, take it away. It's pleasing to you, and always remember. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we come to you remembering Jesus and the blood that was shed on that cross, knowing that it washes away our sins and we have that chance to be with you in heaven. Thank you so much for the, your son and his love. Please be with us as we take this through the vine, taking it away as pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Next song is number 988, I'll Be Listening. And now, uh, let me mention, right after this song, before we have our scripture reading, I've added this song this morning, and it ties into our lesson. It's number 710. So it's not on the board because there's a light, last minute kind of adding on my part, but it'll be number 710 that we'll sing after number, this song, number 988. When the Savior calls, I will win. He calls for me, I will hear him. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear him. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my robe is white when he calls me, if my robe is white, I will hear. My robe is white when he calls me. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. For my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name. Number 710. 710. Haven't led this song for a while, but let's sing it twice through, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. 
give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord be gracious unto you. I'm sorry about that. Let's sing it again because it's an important, important song before our lesson. I'll practice that a little better. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. butchered that song, but there's a real meaning in this, not mine. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your help. The scripture reading this morning will be taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Hostility and animosity. 
And so when we think even about domestic violence, we don't usually think about that, but there's a lot of that going on. And what I'm trying to get across to you as we look at the lessons, blessed are the peacemakers, there's just not a whole lot of peace on the planet in our society. Would you all agree with that? I mean, peace seems so elusive. It seems so difficult to obtain. And so what I want to do today in a very simple way is talk about peace. Now, when, when we talk about peace, we're generally thinking only of one thing. That is the absence of hostility. And usually that's the problem in the peacemaker kind of uh, avenue because if we think that the absence of hostility or we just quit fighting, then there's peace. But it's not just the absence of something, it's also the presence of something else. And that is when we have tranquility of mind. When, there, when it's not just the ceasing of hostility, but there's also the presence of something good in our lives. And what the Bible talks about when he uses the word peace, it's a Hebrew word, shalom, which means there's wholeness now. Now, I, I was thinking, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And, of course, in my thinking, you know how it goes sometimes, I thought, man, they need to give us so much peace in their minds, I just wonder how they have anything left. <laughs> because there's a whole lot of that goes on. So, when we talk about peace, first of all, I just want to put this across, and we'll look at it a little deeper in a moment, that peace is not just the absence of fighting and fussing, of strife and contention. But it's also the presence of something else, and we'll just call that tranquility of mind. Now, one of the great verses there, and I'm not going to preach on this today, but I think it's, it's something we ought to think about. In Philippians chapter 4, in verse 7, and this is a verse that most of you who have been around the block for a while have heard many, many times, that the peace of God uh, passes all understanding. You ever heard that verse? Okay. Now, if you notice, though, he's not saying peace with God, but he's talking about the peace of of God. Think about this for just a moment. Having, hold on a minute, I want you, I want you just to sink in for a second. Having the peace of God. Having the peace of God. Now, you think about that. The God of peace. Having that in your life. Now, there's another thing I want to throw in about when we talk about what is peace and suggest it in the, in the Word. And I wrote these notes down because I wanted to say it very clearly. So stay with me when I read this for a moment and then we can talk about it. But, but peace also suggests this, that there's rule of order in chaos. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, if, if the inner life, you have peace of mind, then you have, the result of that is, it, no matter what the circumstances are, and they can be pretty tough, but there's a rule of order, not chaos. In other words, you're keeping your head when everybody else isn't. And, and, and if you think about it, as you go into the home or into certain relationships, there's all this tension, there's all this strife, there's all this chaos. And so further on than what I said, that, that you, well, here's, here's what I'm thinking about. You can go into a nerve-wracking situation where you can almost feel the tension in the air, but there's a rule of order. And the rule of order in your life, if you have the peace, is you're not thrown out of bounds. Uh, or put it this way. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15, and these are great verses, what it says is let the peace of God or let peace be the rule in your life. Now, now watch it here. Uh, we were at the football game the other night. And you, you ever notice on a football field there are about four or five umpires? Now think about this for a moment. If you took the umpires off of the field, there's no rule. What kind of game are you going to have? Why, it's going to be something else. I think there'd be a lot of punching, a lot of kicking, and who knows what else goes on. So there's a, there's a sense where the umpires rule the game. And what he's saying here in Colossians 3.15 is, now watch it here because it's very, very important. We're talking about peace when we talk about what peace is. We're not talking about just the absence of hostility. 
when we're talking about the presence of something, and then when we're talking about there is a rule of order, and no matter what kind of circumstances you're facing, and you might be really facing some really tough circumstances, but see, there's a rule there that in the chaos, in, 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 in these kind of turbulent situations, there is a rule of order where you're not losing your mind. And then thirdly, you see, let the rule of peace govern your life. And you see, what happens if you don't have that? Well, you're out of control. Think about it. If there was an umpire, and no matter what, what place you find yourself in, or you put yourself in, that there's something ruling over that situation. Am I making sense? So, that's what we talk about peace. Now, let's go to this business about peacemaker. Notice, notice this. He's not saying here that those blessed are the peacemakers who love peace. But what he's saying is, blessed are the peacemakers who make peace. That's what a peacemaker does. I mean, the peacemaker is the one who works for peace. Now, it doesn't mean appeasement. I, I, I was going to tell you about Chamberlain. I'm not going to do that. He's a very controversial figure back in the 1937, 38, 39. He actually died in 1940. How many remember Chamberlain? Anybody remember him? Prime Minister of England. Well, I don't want to get into the whole story, but just let me float it by real quickly. Chamberlain tried to make peace by appeasement. And when he tried to appease somebody you can't make peace with, the devil of Germany, they sacrificed Czechoslovakia on the altar. They just gave them away. So when we talk about peace, we're not talking about appeasement. Because, you see, if you say peace and you're just going to tolerate something you can't tolerate, injustice, you see, sometimes to make peace you just can't overlook evil things. You just, can't, you just can't ignore uh, those kind of things that are going on because that's not peace. And that, again, that's what's wrong with peacemaking. All they want to do is try to get rid of the external hostility and see it's never, it never comes to peace because the real cause and the real source of the trouble is never addressed. And if you can't deal with the source or the trouble, what's causing the peace or what's causing the disruption, then you can never really solve it. So you go to marriage counseling. And you never really deal with the peace. You just say, stop fighting, and guess what they do in another week? Because, see, unless you... Well, think about this. <clears throat> there was a river here not, a lot, close to us not too long ago that was filled with Myrex. Y'all are doing it. You couldn't fish in it. You couldn't swim in it. You couldn't drink it because there's chemical in the water. So in order to deal with the source of the problem, you've got to get stop the factories from dumping that stuff in the water. So if you never deal with the source and you're just doing cosmetic stuff, you're just putting a band-aid on it, just put some handcuffs on it, it doesn't really deal. And that's the whole problem in, in the world today is because we can't seem to deal with the source of the problem where there's hostility in the, in the heart and in the mind, where there's enmity between uh, one another. And so you just you get some kind of a peace treaty that you say, man, there you go again. There you go again. Here we are in the Middle East. They've been fighting as long as I can remember. In fact, they've been fighting long before I can remember. They just never seem to have peace. Why is it? Because you can't deal with the real problem. And unless you deal with the real problem, how in the world are you going to have peace? Now let's think about this. Peace has to start with you. How in the world do you think that you're going to have peace with anybody if you don't have peace with yourself? It just can't happen. I mean, if you're always angry and you're mad and you're frustrated and, and you can't get along with yourself, uh, how in the world, I mean, how, how, how can you even think? If you're so unsettled in your own heart, in your own mind, how in the world are you ever going to be a peacemaker? I don't think it can happen. And so if you're going, when we talk about peace and a maker of peace, you certainly have to be at peace with yourself because if you're angry all the time, you're upset about everything, you can't even get along with yourself. 
How are you going to get along with somebody else? It's impossible. So when we talk about peace, and listen, you can slide by this, but Duke University did an interesting study about peace of mind and people have peace. Let me go ahead and give you these little lists. You can work on them. There's something you can work on all the time. But, but what they started out by saying was four out of five nervous breakdowns are psychosomatic. That means your mind's working on you. Uh, psychosomatic, you know, how you're thinking affects your physical. And so they're saying four out of five nervous breakdowns. Notice, notice we're talking about peace with yourself. How did you get a nervous breakdown? How did you fall to pieces? Well, it starts on the inside. It's what's going on inside you. And so if there's Myrex in your heart, in your soul, huh? Now, watch what they say. Duke University says, here's what contributes to what robs people of mental and emotional peace. And they said here, number one, suspicion and resentment. I'm not going to preach on these. I'm just going to give you the list. Bitterness that poisons the mind that's cancer to the soul. Three, nursing a grudge. Number four, a refusal, a refusal to accept things you cannot change. Now, I'm going to say one thing about here. Because peacemakers really attempt and try to resolve the conflict, to reconcile the relationship, to, to do that. So when we talk about tolerant, we're not talking about appeasement, ignoring the problem, so forth. In other words, we're talking about things you really can't change. It goes back to Romans 12 and verse 18. You are going to meet some people in life that there's absolutely no solution. That's what Paul meant. Be at peace with all men if possible. There are some scoundrels in life you can never be at peace with. Y'all don't believe that. I mean, there are some people who are troublemakers, not peacemakers. They are contentious. By the way, 2 Timothy 2 and 22 said, The servant of the Lord is not quarrelsome. And I've known some brethren that don't fit that very well. How about you? There are people that like to fight, they like to argue, they like to cause contention. That's, that's just their way of life. As soon as they come in the room, they're, they're just, all, they just almost all, all of a sudden, they're arguing. By the way, you folks are way in the back. If it's empty like this next week, move on up. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'll do a little commercial here. Well, I will go. All right, so the, my point, though, is simply this. You have to, if you're going to be a peacemaker, which is rather risky, would you all agree with that? Because you get in the middle of stuff. And most of us want to avoid confrontation. We don't want to really deal with the real issue. And I'm saying the real issue sometimes might be you. And we have a tendency to look that way and say, you know what? I just might be the real problem. D.L. Moody one time said, the person I met the most trouble with is myself. How about it? Think about it. I mean, look at your life. <clears throat> Do some inventory. Am I hard to get along with? Do I like to argue? Do I like to get it going? Do I have to have the last word? Do I have to get... By the way, over in Proverbs, the Bible says... Let me see if I can remember the verse. It's in Proverbs chapter 26... And he talks about the lack of wood, the fire goes out. Let me do that again. Well, we like to pile on the wood, don't we? Yeah. I mean, if that fire's going out, we're going to put some wood on it. And so what he's saying, with the lack of, uh, of wood, the fire goes out. And then he goes on to say, if I can remember the rest of that verse. Let me see if i got it written down here. And where there is no whisper, contention quiets down. How about that? Now watch what he's saying. Uh, there's, there's a legend. Uh, the Greeks had the, uh, uh, this mystery where Hercules is going down the road and, and he is confronted by a monster. And he clubs the monster over the head and he continues the journey. Well, as he goes down the road further, this same monster appears to him, but it's three times bigger. And then he, he clubs that, and he goes down, and it just gets bigger and bigger. And finally, Paulus, which is the Greek god, comes and said, the monster that you are meeting is called strife. You keep it going, and then what goes? You can't let it go. 
You put some wood on the fire every night. You keep it burning. And just when you think this thing is just going to die out, that there's just a little flicker left, guess what you do? So he says, well, where there's a lack of wood, the fire goes out. So if you, if you are a peacemaker, you're not adding wood to the fire, right? Isn't that what he's saying? So, so now, number one, you've got to be at peace with yourself. And you can't be at peace with yourself. I'm just saying because we're not very good at being introspective. We, we don't sometimes want to admit that I could be the problem. And we have a tendency, well, you go in any divorce court, where do they point the finger? You go, I've been, I've been in counseling before. Now, I, I, I think I told you this before. I am not a good counselor. I had a fellow come into one time. He's circling around the room. He's just about out of his mind. I said, well, what's going on? He says, well, me and my wife fight every night. I said, well, stop it. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out, right? I mean, just stop. Well, I'm not going to get back to when you were a kid and your mother beat you half to death and uh, all that stuff. If you're doing it, just stop it. Well, you know what? He came in a week later. I said, you know what you ought to do? You know, get some good stuff in your life. Start building the relationship. Uh, just, just build on positive stuff. And don't argue anymore. Don't bring any garbage into it. As a matter of fact, I was just up at Niagara. I had to get eaten with somebody because Marcia got me up there in the middle of January to see the lights. There was a couple flashlights. Nearly froze to death on a bus that had no heat. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll get even with this guy. Anyhow. I mean, he took my Saturday away. Good night. I said, why don't you go up to Niagara Falls? I said, you know, I don't have the money. I said, oh, there's a cheap place right down the road you can get a hamburger. Just take her up. Don't argue. Go, don't, don't say, if she gets it going, you don't add any wood to the fire. Just be a nice guy. And so he comes in the next week. It's Saturday. I said, how'd it go last week? He said, well, we didn't go. What did you do? I said, we fought all week. Now, as stupid as that sounds, it's happening all the time. So, if you're going to have peace, you've got to have you've got to be at peace with yourself, and you have to desire peace. You got to want peace. Well, hold on a minute. I, you know, well, that's a dumb point. No, it isn't. You're not going to have peace unless you want peace. It just isn't going to happen. Well, here's a few verses I think I wrote down. In Hebrews chapter 12, and verse 15, 14, the Hebrew writer says, you are to pursue, that is to seek peace. Now, the King James is a little misleading because it says, follow peace. Sort of like my dog follows me everywhere. The Greek word is more aggressive. What it says is you are to pursue aggressively, fervently peace. Or in, in the Ephesian letter it says that you are to strive to have the bond and the unity or the bond of peace. Now, I want you to think about this. He's saying pursue and strive peace. Now, here's the question I'm going to ask you. Hold on a minute. I want to ask you a question. How hard are you trying to have peace in your relationships? And I'm going to say this, not hard enough. The truth is, in so many situations, we aren't trying very hard to have peace. And it's interesting because as I looked at this, there's four or five, six verses that just talk about pursuing, just like a, a wolf would pursue its prey. That you are aggressively hunting and seeking and pursuing peace. How hard are you trying that? See, a peacemaker has to be at peace with himself. Or there can't be peace. If you're contentious and argumentative and, and you're all torn up inside, it just isn't going to work. Would you agree with that? Say amen. 
It just ain't happening. But then you got to desire peace. Because, see, see, a lot of times people just give up. It's hopeless. I don't think it's going to work. I'm done with it. Quit. That's it. So they're, they, they quit pursuing. Well, I tried one time, but see. So, so have you ever noticed, uh, some of you folks have been married for a long time, you keep on this track? See, when Marcia says something to me that I can respond to, I let it go. I don't have to fight every battle. How about you? Every time you disagree, you got to get in a battle over it? See, that, that's a big problem. So when you say, uh, we got, you got to really want to have peace, which means you got to work at it. That's what the idea of a peacemaker is. I mean, peacemakers just don't desire peace, but they start doing things, right? They start doing things to make peace. Well, that sort of makes sense. How can you be a peacemaker unless you want to work it out? You want to work peace. Now, of course, it's not just you and somebody else, but sometimes you get in the thick of it, you know, of where you are involved in trying to reconcile other parties, third parties. Now, maybe you're doing okay with this in your life, but maybe you know some people aren't doing so okay. And one of the one of the real difficulties is, do you want to get in that mess? And most of us don't. I had uh, years ago, this goes years ago now, uh, when I was preaching over in Pennsylvania, I had a person call me about one o'clock in the morning and I heard her husband were having it out. I mean, they were having it out. And um, so she ended up ultimately uh, calling the police, which they didn't want to come. You want to know why they don't want to come? You want to know one of the most dangerous police circumstance is? Right in the middle of domestic violence because guess what? They can get shot too. So you see, being a peacemaker isn't someone who ignores the problem or doesn't want to do uh, anything with the problem, but a peacemaker actually sometimes is trying to work through other people. Now, do you know people like that in your life? Things aren't going very well with someone and someone else. And uh, our, if we're going, and by the way, uh, by the way, listen to this for a minute. The, these uh, things about blessed are the poor and blessed are the meek and blessed are the merciful, this is all the same person. We're not talking about, do you notice there's about eight of these? We're not talking about eight different sorts of people, but the Christian person is to emulate all of this. So every Christian person, right, is to be a peacemaker. In fact, that's Matthew 18. And I don't want to get into Matthew 18, but I'll just direct you there. But, you know, and I'll, I'll do a snapshot of that. If there's a problem between you and another brother, right, you get that thing reconciled. If you don't get it reconciled, guess what? Get that peacemaker to come. And he gets involved in that. See, and so the peacemaker isn't like just hoping for peace and hoping it gets better and, uh, you know, ignoring it and uh, not, not getting involved. But the peacemaker is the person that's trying to reconcile people together. And let me tell you something. The church is needed. When you're bouncing off another person like a billiard ball, you don't have peace. If there's contention and fighting between you and anybody, I don't care if it's in the home or wherever, at work, your vocation, that's not peace. So Jesus is saying, blessed, right? Blessed are those who make peace, the peacemaker, and they shall be called the sons of God. Better than children because what the idea more of the sons of God here, not that there's a big difference, but the idea is these are people of status and honor, people of great value. Think about, just think about being a peacemaker and, and if there was peace in the nation and there was peace at work and there was peace in the family and there was peace between every individual. What a world. It, it almost sounds like a brave new world. Having peace. Desiring peace. Making peace. And of course, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, is the Lord. You see what the Lord did? Let's, let's hold on a minute. I'm going to show you something here. It costs something to have peace. Sometimes wars are unavoidable. You've got to deal with the devil.
There's a price to be paid sometimes for peace. But oh, if you can bring peace. And that's what the Lord did. Now, notice this. And then I will request. In Ephesians chapter 2, he says something very interesting because he reconciled you know, both Jew and Gentile into one body. You all remember the verse of Ephesians 4? Or Ephesians 2, verse 14. What, what happens here is, if you notice, it's not that the enemy is rid of, but it's the enmity that's the source. If you can't get rid of the enmity, and that's a strong word in the Greek, it means the hatred. You know, have you ever been down the road where you've hated somebody and you had this hostility towards it? Because if you have hatred in your heart, it's going gonna, it's gonna to express itself and some kind of hostility. And if you're a pacifist, you just might take a back seat to the whole thing and just kind of want to ignore it. But that's not peace. And, and here's, here's what happens. And then, then I, I really will let you go. But if you go back over to Ezekiel chapter 10, where they say, peace, peace when there's no peace. See, they pretend there's peace, and there really isn't. So you're not throwing something at somebody. But he says, you're saying peace, you pretend to have peace, but there really is no peace, and you plaster the walls with mortar. Well, what happens with that? Well, you put plaster on a wall that has deep cracks, and as soon as it rains, guess what? Plaster doesn't cover up the problem. And boy, if you're buying a house, make sure plaster's not on the wall. If it smells like it was just painted, just go like this, you're still awake. So what he's saying is, you guys pretend to have peace, there really isn't any peace, because the problem underneath, the cracks in the wall, are still there, and it doesn't matter how much plaster you put on it. And that's what people try to do, isn't it? So unless you get rid of the problem, the enmity, the hostility, what's really driving this thing, what you've got to ask yourself, what is really driving this? What is the source of the problem? What's causing the problem? And instead of trying to deal with it superficially, which we do with peacekeeping around the world, and we wonder, well, they just, sold, they just signed a treaty, and guess what? Next week they're bombing each other. And the same thing in the house. Do you understand? So the peacemaker makes peace. Remember, peace isn't just the absence of hostility, but it's the presence of peace, tranquility, and calmness of mind. And Jesus said, blessed, blessed are the peacemakers, because they're like God, and they shall be called Son of God. How good are you at making peace? How about in your home? How about with people you have a difference with? How good are you making peace? Are you striving? Notice the words he for the bond of peace. Do you want peace? Are you willing to go the second mile for peace? Challenging. And the Prince of Peace, it cost him something to make peace. He had to die on the cross. There was a price to be paid so that we could have peace with God. And now we're no longer enemies. He commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. And now we can have peace with God through the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, this is a lesson for us to think about, isn't it? Really is. Blessed are the peacemakers. And the great Prince of Peace brought peace to us. And we can be reconciled to God and have the peace of God. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts as we stand in faith. There's a fountain free, it's for you and me. Let us haste, oh, haste to its free. 
Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a living stream with a crystal gleam from the throne of life. Now it flows while the waters roll. Let the weary soul hear the call that forth freely goes. Will you come? the fountain free. Will you come? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a rock that's flat, and the soul is flat that may not in your water share. Tis for you and me, and in stream I see, let us hasten joyfully there. Will you come, Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come, Will you come tis for you and me, thirsty soul, thirsty soul. hear the welcome call, tis a fountain open for all. Closing song number 712. 712, and we'll have our prayer. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is that stay. Humbling your heart to Saints from the tasting rock, sink the way filled from strut, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will bring their doom, trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise, right to meet in the God's word is told, evils abound. When these signs come to pass, nearing the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. All of the dead shall rise, right to be in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore, when we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling his world's good. Then we'll flock, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will be their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. 
you, Lord, for this day. Just thank you for the wonderful opportunity that you've given to us today to come and to worship you and to commune with you, Lord. And please just be with us as we go out this week. Please just let us try to uh, be peacemakers and to let people know about you and to realize that uh, you make peace for everything, Lord. Please just help us to stay focused on you and just uh, remember that uh, you're in control of everything, Lord. Just thank you for uh, just this wonderful building we have to come to uh, to meet with one another, Lord, and to, to learn about you, Lord. Please just uh, be with us, keep us safe and healthy this week, and sounds like we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.